3,000 miles away in the New York sales office of Pacific Coast Borax, 24-year-old Stephen Mather, a reporter for the New York Sun, was working for Francis Smith's sales force, and he had an idea. He had heard stories about the old days in Nevada and the big teams of Death Valley. What if 20 Mule Team became the brand name for Borax? After all, Americans were buying up dime novels about cowboys and Indians, they were thronging to Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, and they were nostalgic for anything having to do with the frontier. Mather wanted to capitalize on this trend, but Smith resisted changing the name of his brand to 20 Mule Team Borax. I cannot say I like the idea of the Mule Team brand of Borax. My name and that of the company should be in the foreground. But Mather persisted, and Smith relented. Mather also persuaded one of the New York Sun's feature writers, John Randolph Spears, to go to Death Valley and write a series of articles, and the harder task of convincing Smith to pay for the trip. In early 1892, Spears' series of articles was published into a book, Illustrated Sketches of Death Valley and Other Borax Deserts of the Pacific Coast. It was the first book on the Death Valley region, and its colorful descriptions of the working mule teams was the first step in making the 20 mule team an American icon. No matter that the Death Valley sites were long shut down and the teams were only hauling 11 miles from Borate to Dagon, the story of Death Valley's 20 mule teams was a good one and would sell borax. In 1892, on Coyote Lake, just east of the Borate Mine, 150 miles from Death Valley, Smith hired renowned photographer Frederick Monson to set up a photo shoot. Monson was known for his images of the West, particularly of Native Americans. Now he was hired to create an iconic image for the new company's brand. A 20 mule team was made to look as it did in the Death Valley era. The team made several passes in front of the camera until the right image was found. Despite visible tracks in the image from a smaller wagon, possibly the photographers, the image became the new logo and trademark of Pacific Coast Borax. For the next 50 years, this picture would be captioned as the 20 mule team hauling borax from Death Valley. The use of Death Valley in all of its legends was essential if the 20 mule team was to become famous. By 1893, the marketing of 20 mule team borax product was in full swing and a legend was in the making. But 1893 saw the passing of another legend. William Tell Coleman died on November 22nd, 1893, from what his doctor called a general breaking up of the vital forces. The man who tamed Death Valley to yield its treasure, who saved California from anarchy, and kept the state in the Union, who though he nearly lost his entire fortune, rebuilt and paid back every one of his debts to the penny. The man Rudyard Kipling called the Lion of the Vigilantes had unknowingly laid the foundation for an American icon. Coleman lived long enough to see his mule teams advertise borax, but even as the mules were being used for marketing, their hauling days were ending. 